The CompTIA A Plus takes a lot of time talking about mobile devices and laptops. So what I want to do in this episode is basically answer the question, what is a mobile device? Now, to get started, there is no perfect definition out there as to exactly what a mobile device is. So what I'm going to do is give you my learned opinion on what are the aspects that make a mobile device a mobile device and a laptop a laptop. That way you should be able to handle any question you run across on the CompTIA A+. So first of all, when we take a look at a mobile device like this, the first thing we can say is that, well, it's small. It's roughly handheld. So a mobile device is going to be something that you can hold and try to at least halfway operate while holding it in one hand. A laptop, well, I guess technically you could hold it in one hand, and I can't tell you how many times I've put one of these on my lap laptop while I was working on it, but generally we don't consider this to be a handheld device. The second thing to look for that makes a mobile device a mobile device is that it's a sealed device. I can't get in here and change RAM. On this laptop, if I want to, I can go in, I can add new RAM, I can take RAM out, I can replace hard drives if I want, but you really don't have that function with a mobile device. With a mobile device, sure you'll get a few mobile devices that might let you slide in a SD card, and certainly mobile devices tend to have lots of ports to be able to do cool stuff with, but you really consider this a sealed device. There's really not much you can do in terms of what we call a field replacement. In general, if you want to do something with this particular guy, you're going to have to send him back to uh, Apple and let them, them work on it. So that's the other big thing. The third thing that separates a mobile device from a laptop is sensors. A mobile device is packed full of all kinds of cool sensors. For example, you've got a GPS so that you can always tell where you're at at any given moment. You might have a compass so you can tell which direction you're heading and you know which way is north. You could have an accelerometer. Accelerometers are really good at one dimensional movement. You could have a gyroscope. Gyroscopes are really, really nice for three dimensional, highly detailed movement. Another thing you might have is a camera. Most of these mobile devices come with a camera that's so good that they've pretty much replaced most of the point and shoot cameras out there. And then last would be uh, ambient light sensor so that your mobile device can tell how light or dark it is outside. Now I'm not saying that's the only sensors you're going to run into, but those are the big ones. The other big thing that separates a mobile device from a laptop is that mobile devices run on specialized operating systems that are designed to work only for them. For example, you, with your Androids, you have Google Android. For Apple, you have iOS. And for Windows Mobile devices, you've got the different variations of Windows Mobile. The operating system that's running on my machine right here is the exact same one that can run on a desktop. There is no difference. This guy's running an old copy of Windows 7. I could take the same copy of Windows 7 run it on a full-blown desktop system. So that's where that big separator comes into play. A mobile operating system is going to have some aspects that you'll never see on a desktop operating system. For example, it's going to be designed where primarily your interface is touch. Now it's not to say I can't plug a keyboard into my tablet, but in general that's not what we do. The operating system is designed so that you use touch as your primary interface. Also another big thing that separates a mobile OS from a desktop OS, although I got to tell you this one's getting a little bit fuzzier, is that you get applications for a mobile OS from some kind of app store. So for example, for my Android tablet, I go to Google Play. Now, I'm not saying you can't get applications other ways for mobile devices, but it's usually not easy and certainly not pretty. And in Apple's case, they really don't want you to do that. On a laptop, since I'm running a desktop style application, while things like Windows and OS 10 do have store features, I still can go to individual websites, download some install program, and just install from pretty much anywhere I want. So those are the big differences that separate a mobile device from a laptop. Now I need to warn you, there can be some fuzziness. For example, here I got a picture of something. This is a Microsoft Surface. This Surface device is, well, it looks mobile. I mean, it's got a sealed interface and it's handheld, but it actually runs straight Windows 10. Not Windows Mobile, but Windows 10. So the question I have for you, is that particular device a mobile device or is it a laptop? 
To me, it's really more of a laptop, but I'm not going to get into an argument over this. Just be aware that these issues do come into play. Okay. Now that we've got a basic idea of the difference between a laptop versus a mobile device, I want to talk about the different subclasses, as I call them, of mobile devices. I've got a confession to make. When it comes to mobile devices, no matter how old they get, <laughs> I just can't throw them away. So I have got all kinds of mobile devices here in front of me. And what I want to make sure is that for the A+, you recognize these different types or classes or whatever you want to call them of mobile devices. In fact, mobile devices go way back. This is an old Compaq iPack. And uh, I, used to, I used a lot before this, but it was these types of personal digital assistants or PDAs that really started the concept. Now this device ran a version of Windows Mobile but it didn't have wireless, it certainly was not a telephone, and the only way I could sync my data is I had a cradle that I would just drop this down and then it would go ahead and do whatever it needed to do in terms of synchronization. So that was really how it started and I remember years ago saying to myself, I'm carrying around a mobile phone and I'm carrying around a PDA and I was like, can't somebody put these together? And while a number of attempts were made, in particular by Microsoft with different versions of, of the precursor to Windows Mobile, it really came to Apple with the original iPhone. This was the time where we saw a company take the idea of a PDA and combine it with a phone. On top of that, we had a phone, but it also had complete Wi-Fi capability and synchronization really started to take off and the whole idea of cloud synchronization really began to kick in. Okay, so when it comes to classes, let's start with the most basic, and that is a smartphone. This is my current smartphone. This guy is a Galaxy S6. Yeah, I change so often I have to look in the back. So a smartphone contains all those features. It's got a mobile OS. It's going to have Wi-Fi, and most importantly, it's going to have phone capabilities. So there's a SIM in this GSM phone. So that's really what a smartphone really is in terms of the core stuff. And of course, it has to be small enough to put to your head. The big alternative to that is a tablet. So a tablet is running a mobile operating system, but it's going to be bigger. And it's, some of them have phone capabilities, but generally they don't. And if they do have a phone capability, it's really just for tethering and things like that so that people can get on the internet. But the big thing about a tablet is going to have a larger size. Some have stylus support, that type of thing. But all of the major mobile operating systems have tablet versions that they run on. The challenge is, is people like tablets and they also like their smartphones. So for a number of years, a different class of devices have appeared called phablets. He wants to run so bad. Look at this beast. This is an old Galaxy Mega phablet. It's a phone, it's a smartphone. It works just like my regular smartphone, but the big difference is, is that it's huge. I mean, this thing's a monster. I can't tell you how many jokes I get when I'd be sitting there going, oh, I gotta take a call, blurp, and I put this thing on my face. It makes a lot of people laugh. I had a lot of fun, I miss you, baby. Anyway, so a phablet is nothing more than sort of a transition between a smartphone and a tablet, but a phablet will always always be a phone. From here on in I want to talk about what I'm going to call purposely built mobile devices. They're not, these are kind of general purpose if you think about it. The operating systems are fairly generic on any of these. I could run a word processor, you know, I can take pictures with pretty much all of these, but there's a lot of mobile devices that are really designed to do one thing and one thing really really well. For example, this is my girlfriend Hi, Wissa. This is her Nook e-reader. And like a, any type of e-reader, it's designed with uh, paper white. It's designed to be read very, very clearly. Uh, this particular reader has Wi-Fi capability. In fact, I've got it hot rodded. I can reboot it into regular Android if I want to. Oh, I'm not supposed to say out loud. Sorry. But um, an e-reader is designed to do exactly that, to be read. Now, from there, there's other purpose devices. For example, I got to show it to you because I'm so proud of it. My beaten, battered Fitbit Surge. All right, Fitbit, this particular tool right here is a 
designed to do one thing, and that is really to help Mike lose weight. And I've lost almost 50 pounds with this crazy little device. It has certain features that are important for that function. It has a heart rate monitor. That would be a good thing for someone who's trying to get healthy. Uh, it has GPS function. So when I'm doing a run, oh, I'm sorry. When I run, it's not really a run, it's a jog. So when I'm doing my jog, it can keep track of that stuff. It measures my calories and my steps with accelerometers. So we have very much a purpose device, but still a mobile device. The last one I want to talk about is a wearable device. Now there's lots of wearable devices. If you've probably heard of the infamous Google Glass that was popular for a few years that didn't quite take off. Hey, Google, I'm voting on you, man. I know you'll make wearables work. But probably the best example would be a lot of the watches that are out. Now this watch is a purpose watch. It has one particular function. Yeah, it tells time too. But I'm talking about watches that can do anything that a standard mobile device can do. One of my favorite examples is the Apple Watch that my buddy Michael Smyre has. And, well, let's just say Michael doesn't like to part with his watch, so here's a picture of one. The important thing to remember about smart watches, and by the way, it's not just Apple. Android has great ones, too, is that these watches are general purpose. So I can check mail, I can do Word documents, I can talk on some of them. And they also have GPS and all kinds of different functions as well. For the A+, what's important is that you recognize all of these different types of classes or types of mobile devices because when they talk about them, you're going to see them on the exam.